everyone, it's Jamal Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. So Joe Biden had a speech. The speech wasn't bad. The speech was right. But the emphasis is problematic. Because he's, he's right. I, I think he's right in subtext. And he's right even where he's putting his emphasis. Because I, I think that's what the Democratic Party essentially focuses on. He's just telling on himself. So Joe Biden said, this is the first campaign that I can recall where my party did not talk about what it stood for and how to maintain a burgeoning, burgeoning middle class. And the truth of the matter is you didn't hear a single solitary sentence in the last campaign about a guy working on an assembly line making 60000 bucks a year and a wife making 32000 as a hostess in a restaurant. They're making ninety grand, and they've got two kids and they can't make it and they're scared. Joe Biden is right. <clears throat> Ultimately, Hillary Clinton ran that race telling you everything about how bad Donald Trump was. At no point did she make a positive message for herself. The problem is, if you make a positive message and you tell people, I am going to do these things, those people are going to expect you to do those things. Hillary Clinton wanted to take office without any attachments. So for her, it was easier to say, that guy's the goddamn apocalypse and he's going to eat your babies if you put him in office. Vote Hillary. You better be with her. That didn't work. That didn't work. Ultimately, those people said, no, we are not with her. And unfortunately, Trump got in office. And understand me, I'm not saying unfortunately because Hillary was a better option. No, not at all. I would have said unfortunately even if Hillary got it. It was not a decent choice. I mean, both cases were negative choices. The point I'm getting at is, Joe, ultimately, the Democratic Party has been coasting on Reaganism, but speaking like FDR. That's what it boils down to. You guys say what you need to say to get elected, but your rhetoric in no way matches your action. You're a left-leaning party. Your boss gave 95% of the wealth to the top 1%. In a left-leaning party, at a time where income inequality is massive, a Republican couldn't do that. Put that in perspective. That is an amazing sum of money. If George Bush did that, it would have been understandable. It would have been detestable. Your boss did that. He's a Democrat. What does it make it? What does that make it? Certainly it's worse when a Democrat does it. I think Swerps, personally. Democrat is supposed to represent the 99%. The 1% that he is not supposed to represent is the one that he gave 95% of the wealth to, if we're going to put it in perspective. So, yes, Joe, I get it. The middle class was important. It's almost like calling to pay a bill after you lose your job. Yeah, that's exactly what it's like. Somebody calls up and, hey, I need to pay this bill. It's very important I pay this bill. Okay, how much can you pay per month? I just lost my job. I just lost my job. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I really do want to pay this bill. It's like, yeah, Joe, I get it. It sounds great to say that when you're not in office and you have no power whatsoever to affect any agenda at all. You're not even in government anymore. You're not even in government anymore. So this sounds nice. Why weren't you doing this when you guys were in office for eight years? That's what I'm not understanding. Even when the health care bill came up. Even when the health care bill came up. Obama ran on that. There's no public option. You put in a mandate to force people to buy insurance from a private company. It, it, I mean, it's one thing after another. If you're going to get in office and you're going to say we need to focus on the middle class, then you should focus on the middle class. You should focus on protecting them, not protecting drug companies by preventing Medicare from negotiating with drug companies. Not keeping insurance companies in the mix, allowing them to make millions of dollars at the expense of Americans who voted for you, by the way. It's not about the goddamn election. It's about being in that office and doing things to represent the people who are voting for you, who are putting their hopes in you. This is exactly the reason why you guys hate Sanders so much. The one honest man in the room makes everyone else look like liars. The very fact that he says those things, that he opens his mouth and what comes out is progressivism. The middle class. We need to focus on the middle class. Hey, hey, that sounds great. Hey, people like to hear that. That's true. The rich should pay more. Cross the spectrum. Everyone believes that. 
corporations should not be able to run roughshod over people. Corporations are not citizens. The big banks need to be broken up. College should be paid for. One thing after the other. That's the real thing. Sanders, believe it or not, is not even a socialist. Sanders is just a Democrat. Honestly. A real Democrat. What Democrats were during the FDR era. Hell. Like an Eisenhower almost. I mean, granted, he's more liberal than Eisenhower. But making this point that he's not this far left person. He's just a Democrat. It's just that the politics in the country have moved so far over to the right. Democrats started taking a lot of money. They moved their policies over to the right to pay back that money in favors, in tax cuts. It's not about talking pretty. It's about getting in that office and doing what's best for your public, for the American people. Not the donors, not the corporations, not Wall Street, not some shadowy plutocrat that's giving you a bunch of money to affect some stupid-ass trade deal. The public is the point. You lost because you did not represent the public. Stop with the rhetoric. Stop with the rhetoric. That's what it boils down to. You guys, and look, if you were this concerned about it, because part of the reason you're probably doing this is because you want to run, you shouldn't have let Obama wave you off. You shouldn't have let him wave you off. You knew, at the very least, anyone with any level of political acumen could look at the public and was very clear that they were not in a status quo time. They wanted something different. They significantly wanted something different. Your team, your party, essentially says, yes, I don't care what they want. It's her turn. That's basically what, over and over again, I don't care what they want. It's her turn. When you ask... Or you kind of talked about putting your head in the ring. You were pushed aside. Sanders comes in. That's Cheatham. From the beginning to the end. I don't care what you want. This has nothing to do with democracy. It's her turn. Your party has issues. Your party has issues. So yes, you should talk about the middle class more. More importantly, the policies that you put in place should represent the middle class class. Period. Period. That's what you fundamentally miss. That's what your entire team fundamentally miss. And talking about what you stand for. Nobody knows what you stand for. Nobody knows. And I'm talking about people in your party, luminaries in your party. That crook down in Brazil, Nancy Pelosi. It was one person after another. Every time they were asked, nobody could come up with an answer of what the Democratic Party stood for. Everybody was fundamentally in the dark. Completely. So, yes, you're going to pay your bill now that you don't have a job. That's awesome. whoop de do. All right, guys. If you enjoy the content, feel free to like, comment, share, of course. And you can support the work on Patreon. Thanks, guys.